Well, hey everyone, my name is Nathan Jones, and if you're new here, welcome. I talk about all things movies, specifically Blu-rays, and today we're talking about something really special. We're talking about the Barnes & Noble Criterion sale that is going on right now. Um, it started on July 10th, and more or less has already ended because the online uh, stock for Barnes & Noble is incredibly low and almost everything is out of stock. So I wanted to make this video today of some Blu-ray recommendations. Uh, I've only really had the time to make a video today in the last really six days I've been working. Um, but yeah, uh, so I actually had to cut some of the videos that I, or some of the movies that I wanted to recommend for you to pick up because a lot of them are not in stock. Now, unfortunately, um, I am in a spot in Springfield, Missouri, where our Barnes & Noble doesn't have any good stock whatsoever of any movies. There's like six movies there on like a little stand. We don't have a Criterion section. We don't have really have a movie section. So the closest that I can go to for a Barnes & Noble is 160-ish miles. Uh, and so it's not really worth a trip for me to go pick up Criterions from Barnes & Noble themselves. So I had to order online and I ordered it around midnight when the sale went live and uh, mine is still on its way. I don't even know if it's shipped yet. Um, I just... Honestly, I, I really wish I, I knew that. I'd try, try figuring it out, and uh, it says it shipped on Sunday, but I don't really know if that's true. Um, but anyway, that's, uh, that's not something you need to hear. Um, so today, though, I did pick, get something from Criterion that just came out recently, and I want to showcase that. And then I want to talk about some movies that I want to um, recommend to you that are still in stock. And there's also another film that I want to talk about because I just want to talk about it. Um, and I feel like this is the a good time and I recently watched it so let's just jump right into the box that I want to showcase all right so the box that I want to showcase is the recent Bruce Lee his greatest hits this just finally came in the mail to me this is spine number 1036 it's got five films from 1971 to 1978 those are the big boss fist of fury the way of the dragon enter the dragon and game of death and this is a really wonderful uh, wonderful box and uh, it was kind of rumored that this was going to go out of print very, very soon, especially when it got released. And now it's kind of out of, you know, out of stock, at least online. And so uh, it's definitely going really, really fast. Now, I do want to mention before I jump into showcasing this, that Criterion, uh, maybe a week before the sale went live, that they sent a, an email to people who previously pre-ordered on this set from Criterion themselves. And they said, hey, if you want, there is a sale coming up uh, from Barnes & Noble that will have this sale at a discounted price. And if you want to cancel your order or return it or figure out something to where you buy it on Barnes & Noble, um, we don't mind, which I think is incredible and makes uh, Criterion just to be one of the greatest um, companies out there. At least, obviously, we, we love boutique labels, right? Uh, but Criterion it just happens to be one of those companies that looking out for us as a consumer and not just going for the money grab. They're not saying like, hey, just buy from us, you know? And so I just think that's really fantastic. And I just wanted to say thank you to Criterion. I just really love you guys. And I'm really happy that you put out amazing, amazing work. And uh, I'm sure everyone in the community really loves it too. So let's look at this box set. So when we open it up, this is a just a really quick showcase of the seven discs that have, um, are in this set, um, and I'll showcase that in a second. But I first want to mention um, the film essay book that comes that looks like a magazine. It's really, really cool. Um, you got Bruce Lee. There's like a centerfold piece uh, picture of Bruce Lee. That's uh, really, really cool. But if you, if you kind of open this up, it kind of showcases all of the different uh, posters for each of these films. Obviously, there's a film essay in it, some other... Um, kind of rundowns of a lot of things going on in um, there. Some of the movie posters, um, kind of synops synopses of uh, of all the films. It's a really really cool little uh, booklet slash magazine. All right, so let's look at the this. Oh, I'm about to drop the box itself. All right, balance on my knee, please. Um, now this what I'm about to show you is just wonderful, and honestly, it could be a thumbnail itself. Look at that. That looks amazing. Um, now on the other side of this are the seven discs. Now you have the five films right here, and you also have the two discs of supplements. So it's got a lot of special features. And so I can't wait to dive into this. I, yep, there it is. I dropped it finally. 
Um, I'll get it off camera sometime. Um, I have only watched uh, Enter the Dragon a couple years ago for the first time. And as a fan uh, of Mortal Kombat, because I grew up in the 90s, um, this is like the precursor to that. And um, obviously very different things, so don't, don't mix up the two. I just, I saw a lot of similarities when I was watching that film being like, oh wow, this is just a really cool um, world tournament thing going on and I really love that. So I cannot wait to dive deep into this Bruce Lee box set and I just picked it up so it really will be very shortly um, that I watch these films because I'm just really excited about it. Um, oh yeah, so that is that box set. All right, so before I dive into the film recommendations that I wanna talk about, I wanna mention a film that I recently watched for the first time and it's been sitting on my shelf for far too long. <laughs> well, I had to think of a time to watch it. Um, you probably know where I'm going with this. It's a really kind of a horrifying watch and you have to really be in the right mindset to watch this film. It's by Pier Paolo Pasolini and I finally watched Solo or 120 Days of Sodom. I finally watched this movie. Wow, this is a sickening, sadistic um, film that really showcases how power over an individual or a group of people, especially during a time where a dictatorship and a fascist dictatorship kind of takes over during World War II in Italy, um, and a group of just really gross people um, just really deprive um, a, these teens of their humanity. Um, it's a sick movie to watch, but at the same time, um, uh, let me backtrack. Subjectively and objectively, I had to give this film a two and a half on Letterboxd. So if, oh, by the way, if you haven't, uh, check me out on Letterboxd down in the uh, description down below. I'm right there. So I want to say this film is really hard to rate. And honestly, I want to say, I have to say that it's really, you can't really rate it. Because like I was, kind of was about to you know, allude to, is subjectively and objectively very different things. So objectively, it is a really, really, yeah, it is a really, really well-made film for what it's showcasing. It is showcasing all of the things I just mentioned, uh, just that depravity of humanity that exists and how we can uh, show, showcase that power over another person in a very sick way. And now, sub, like subjectively, it's not a film that I would wanna go to uh, too often. It's not a film that I would wanna watch too often, um, but it, it has this um, uh, era around it um, that a lot of people in the community uh, like to talk about it kind of as a joke in a, in a way where it's like, oh, you're, you're feeling crazy, huh? You want to watch Solo, right? Um, yeah, I, you know, I finally watched this movie and um, yeah, it does live up to his expectation uh, or it's like, I guess, notoriety of it being a really, really crazy film. Um, so if you are up for it, I would say watch this film. Uh, it's certainly a film that showcases all those things that I mentioned. But it's also like it's it's a one that will stick with you. It's one that will not make you feel very comfortable. Um, but yeah, I watched Solo and um, I both enjoyed and was disturbed by it at the same time. Uh, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to mention it because I finally watched it and uh, it's, it's it's something to talk about, right? Um, I, I want to hear in the comment section down below. Have any of you seen Solo or plan on seeing Solo? All right, so I want to briefly mention a few films that I actually originally planned to talk about. Uh, in this recommendation video, um, but all of these are out of stock on Barnes & Noble, so I, I just wanna really give a really brief rundown of these four films. I have right here Christian Mingus, uh, Mungus, I can't say his name right, he's a Romanian director. Four months, three weeks, and two days right here. We also have Gilda, directed by Charles Vidor, Rita Hayworth right there. I watched this last night and absolutely loved it. Rita Hayworth is a stunning, sensational person in this film and um, just walks all over every man involved in the film and the power she has over Glenn Ford who they have a such a love hate relationship um, it's just it's stunning it's a great noir check it out also it's got a really really pretty spine number right there um, hoop dreams I have had a major shift in my love of basketball and I haven't watched this uh, since then, but um, I'm just really in love with basketball. This is like a documentary about two teens in Chicago, um, kind of escaping poverty uh, and uh, their dream to become uh, professional basketball players. And it's a really, really 
really great film um, and it really showcases a lot of different aspects of society and really showcasing a lot of the, you know those how those aspirations can either fall or uh, live up to what they're going for um, it's really 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 good and uh, I'm just using a lot of really weird adjectives the reason I wanted to bring up this film is actually I've watched the last dance of Michael Jordan and I'm just in love with basketball I actually have a basketball uh, goal in my yard now and I've been playing and I've been watching uh, the Indiana Pacers um, and yeah I'm just having a, such a blast um, with my new hobby and um, that's a whole nother video I'm sure a lot of people are not used to me talking about sports um, and then the other thing is Nashville Robert Altman's 1975 classic with an amalgam of a lot of people and a lot of cast and characters uh, it's a really really great film um, and there's a lot of really great scenarios and situations and scenes that exist yeah, those four films I want to recommend. Um, if you get a chance and are able to pick these up, definitely do so. They're really fantastic. Um, so let's just go into my, my last two recommendations, ones that you can actually pick up from Barnes & Noble online at this current moment of me recording this. First one that I want to mention is a film by Terrence Malick, The New World. Uh, came out in 2005. I actually watched the um, extended edition, the 172-minute one. This is starring, starring Colin Farrell. He is John Smith, and I'm um, Koryanka Kilcher who is Pocahontas. I hope I said her name right. Um, this is a really, really great visual narrative uh, of the Pocahontas story that we all know um, that we originally probably got maybe from our Disney uh, viewing, but this is a definitely a different kind of take on that. It's a little bit more visceral. Um, it's definitely a lot more visual because that's a Terrence Malick film, right? Um, but it's a really, really great film and I highly recommend it. It's a beautiful one too. It's very poetic. Um, as a lot of the things that Malik does are. And yeah, it's just really great performances. Christian Bale's also in the film. Uh, in the last third act of the film, he plays um, John Rolfe. Yeah. Uh, when Pocahontas goes to England, right? Another love interest. And yeah, it's just a really great film. I highly recommend it. It's still in stock. It's really, I got the really cool box set with it. It comes with a cool film essay. And then the last thing that I want to mention is actually a box set. Um, so... I'll just mention that Volume 3 of Martin Scorsese's World Cinema Project is about to happen. Um, it's about to hit, um, I don't remember when it was announced, but it's an upcoming release from Criterion. But I want to talk about Volume 1. Volume 1 came out a few years ago, and I finally was able to watch every film in this. I still have not seen Volume 2, it's right over here, um, and I haven't seen any of the films in that box set, but I have seen these ones. So we have Tuki Buki, Redis, a River Called Titas, Dry Summer, Trances, and The Housemaid. And I'm going to say the countries in order of how I just mentioned all the films. Senegal, Mexico, uh, Bangladesh, Turkey, Morocco, and South Korea. So all of these films and filmmakers are kind of lesser known and um, definitely not showcased enough. And so that, that was kind of uh, the vision of the Martin Scorsese cinema pro World Cinema Project is it really wants to showcase uh, to the world the, the, the films that uh, have really um, impacted a lot of um, how cinema has adapted in those countries and also those forgotten tales uh, that it wants to showcase. And so I really, really love Trances, The Housemaid, and Tukibuki. Those are some of my favorite films from this particular box set. Some of these films are really transcendent and uh, really speak to the time that these movies were made. And so, yeah, check out this box set if you haven't checked it out before. It's a really cool deep dive. If you're really into art house cinema, this is the fun stuff to get. And uh, yeah, so those are my recommendations. What have you picked up during this Barnes Noble sale? Um, I hope that you were able to get some something and I hope the circumstances change very soon. It, a lot of things come back in stock, I hope. Um, I wanna give a special shout out to uh, several of my friends in the YouTube community that have actually recently mentioned me and uh, I wanna say thank you so much for them. So recently, um, my really good friend Chris over in Filmstock has recently uh, shouted myself out and my buddy Christian who's been on here a lot from her tastic reviews. Um, yeah, so Chris, go f check out Filmstock. He's really wonderful. I, I love him. I hope to collaborate with him very shortly, very soon. Um, David from Cartoon Fortress also mentioned me recently and I want to say thank you. We've been uh, uh, good friends for a long time actually. Uh, Steph from Movie Chatter, she's been doing really great work and I hope to work with her very, very shortly too. Um, once I get the time to do that. Um, also, follow Daisuke Beppu, Elliot Cohen, uh, and film, film blogger Sam. Recently, um, film blogger Sam and Elliot Cohen 
uh, put out a podcast. Um, Sam put out this podcast called Let's Watch 2. It's a search for the ultimate double feature. I checked it out on Spotify. I'm going to put that link in the description. Um, it's really wonderful. It has Rebecca, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's film, and you also have P.T. Anderson's uh, Phantom Thread, and it's a really great double feature, uh, Rebecca and Phantom Thread. I, I, I highly recommend it. It's a good discussion, too. And so check out that podcast down in the description. I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I want to hear your comments down below. Tell me about the criterions that you picked up or plan on picking up during this sale. Um, hit that notification bell, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'm not jonesing around.